Good afternoon, everyone. Tracking Man 44 here. You know, I showed y'all a couple of uh, odd things that I got in my shop, but this afternoon I'm going to do a quick little video to show you a really neat new addition uh, that's in the obscure department to a to a, tip, to a home shop. Um, not to my shop is, is the typical home shop, but uh, it definitely is kind of a neat little thing. Now, this doesn't look like anything except a homemade box with a big old dial on it, a receptacle, and a couple of switches, and also a fuse. But let me tell you what's inside that box. Um, first off, this is a, um, a scale that goes from 0 to 100. Now, that's 0 to 100 uh, percent of whatever the output is of the component that's inside the box. Now, what's inside there is a, um, a, it's a essentially a variable resistor. Uh, I don't know the proper term. Uh, somebody's going to yell at me, I'm sure. But it's essentially an auto transformer or it's a, a variac. Uh, I think is what what you would call it specifically, but it's just a great big heavy wound coil that has a wiper on it and that wiper will be controlled by this this knob right here and that wiper will vary the output of that auto transformer variac or whatever you want to call it um, and it'll provide from 0 to 100 percent of what that has the capacity of putting out and in this particular case, obviously it has 110 volt receptacles, so we have to assume we're gonna get roughly 110 volts out of it. But here's a trick. If you notice the top switch right here, which you can't really see because I've not cleaned this up yet, it's got an AC position and it's got a DC position. So what's inside here is going to be a rectification circuit that takes whatever output there is on that, uh, on that auto transformer and it's going to rectify it and change it into a DC output. But anyway, we put a meter on the uh, the, the AC alternating current uh, voltage scale right here, and I've turned it on, or plugged it in anyway. So I'm going to flip the switch. I've got it plugged into the receptacle, and I've got the uh, the red the the knob on 100%. So let's take a look, see what it's going to do. It's 140 140 volts AC. Now, if, if if I rotate this down, you can see you can dial it in to a specific voltage, 119.3 all the way down just 106 let's keep on going down 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 there we go we're at we're at about uh, about five percent at nine volts 1.3 volts at zero and put six tenths of one volt at zero all the way to 140 139.8 volts is what it uh, what is balanced out at so that's in the AC mode so let's turn it off let's go to the DC scale that's the voltage with the little line and the dotted line. And let's turn it on and see what we got in DC. Okay, it's in the off position. There's DC volts. Let's turn it on and uh, we're at 100%. Okay, it says negative 125.6. I've got the, the, the leads reversed. If I just replace the, uh, interchange the red and the black, but I don't want to do that because it'll, it might mess my connection inside there. But uh, 125.8 volts DC. And if we roll the knob, you can see you can dial it all the way down. Let's see how far down she'll go. This is actually the first time I'm playing with this thing, if you wonder why I'm kind of questioning some of this stuff. There's 15.7, I'm at 10%. Two tenths of one volt DC all the way down at zero. So you might ask, what are you going to do with something like that that has a DC voltage power supply? Well, there's any number of things that you're doing in your shop. Uh, that you really need to have DC voltage you know, in order to check out. Uh, just the, the items are too numerable to mention. Um, I just can't think of anything that's short, quick, and concise, you know, right now. But uh, it definitely is going to come in handy. And as an added bonus, uh, I still got everything in the off position. But uh, what we've got here is we've got a cord with jumper clips on it. Uh, now, I wouldn't recommend doing using these with uh, 110 volt, but uh, it's specifically for the DC uh, setting. Put it on DC. You plug this in and whatever component you're testing, whatever voltage DC you need that's going to be required for testing, you can use the alligator clips plugged into that and uh, you can you can take care of it. Personally, I think I'm going to change these to different, you know, to a different set of clips, something that's just a little more, a little more easily used. Now I can tell by picking it up uh, that it, it's fairly light, so it's not a real heavy duty um, auto transformer. It's probably, just my guesstimation without opening up and actually taking a look at it, I'm going to say it's probably a 3 or 4 amp. They're rated in amp in amperage. Um, of course, if you over amp, it's got your inline fuse right here. It's going to pop that fuse, and I'm sure it's going to pop the fuse on the uh, incoming side of the 
auto transformer. Uh, don't really know that. I, I probably shouldn't even say that. But at any rate, it definitely has a, a plenty of useful things that, that it can be used for, you know, in a, in a home shop such as myself. And, uh, many, many times in the past, I've needed a, a DC power supply, you know, to test something. Um, I've got some 90 volt DC uh, motors, you know, like variable motors, you know, for uh, that go on a planer in feed rolls. Uh, you know, I've got several of those, so now I'm going to be able to take care of that. Uh, and there's any number of things you can do with the AC of the alternating current side. Uh, you can actually use it to uh, to vary the speed of a of a of a motor that's um, that's not a variable speed motor, like a, a say a, a little vibrating pad sander or something like that. Uh, it just comes on across the line and runs full bore. You can actually uh, you can actually throttle that down a little bit. You know, uh, the same thing with a, a drill motor, you know, or a sawzall or anything like that. I don't think it's heavy enough for a skill saw. A skill saw is going to draw too many amps. Maybe even a sawzall draw too many amps. I just have to check and see what the limitations are. Uh, but like I say, there's a there's a number of things. For sometimes, you know, you get a you don't have a a battery or a charger or something for a uh, for an old battery drill you might pick up. You can use this just to check a drill motor, see if it's worth spending the money and getting a battery for it or a battery and a charger for it. You know, fire up the DC portion of this, hook onto your uh, onto your positive negative see if that motor will run you know if it don't run throw the whole thing away don't waste any money trying to buy anything for it that's just another thing but there are just any number of things i think you could i really wouldn't want to dim lights with it but i think you probably could if you absolutely had to but anyway like i said i ain't gonna ramble on no more um it really is a neat little guy kind of looks like an old radio don't it? you know you know see if you can get some country music you know or maybe some rock and roll if you're somebody like myself but at any rate I told you going to be quick, short, and to the point. That's not always the case with my videos, but this one is. It's Trackman 44, and I am out of here.